What would it be like if you had a GPS system in your mind, in your memory palace? Well, this is Fox Street, over there is Collingwood Street, and I memorized these locations, this intersection, and I'd love to show you exactly how that works, so you can do it too. That's coming right up. Hey there, this is Anthony Metivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com where we help mature learners of every age learn to use their memory and really, really hit the ground running with memory techniques. And I was just on a YouTube Live session there explaining to people how that you can use your memory to memorize locations and do it really quickly. So if you're new here, get started now by hitting the thumbs up and subscribing to this channel so you don't miss anything. And uh, over here we got Collingwood Street. See if we can get that sign in there for you. There it is. We'll walk over to 35 Collingwood Street here and it should be a place called Stalled Espresso Cafe where I'm gonna meet Martin. We're gonna talk about books and stuff and probably talk a, quite a bit about my new memory book coming up. Anyway, why it's so important to use the memory techniques I talked about on this previous live stream, sharing a little bit about how that I encoded all of that and made it happen. Looking for this place and here it is, Stalled Cafe. Is it 35? or stalled espresso. Not sure where I can see the number, but uh, we made it. And wow, this is gonna be a great memory palace. But one of the things that I talked about is by doing this spatial mapping before getting here, and setting the stage for it being a more profound experience for the memory. And there's something in the brain called norepinephrine that is produced in novel situations, new situations, that makes things more memorable. And so, you know, this is a little bit speculative based on what I understand about brain science and so forth. I do have a PhD, but I'm not a brain scientist. So, you know, you gotta do this, back this up with your own research. Basically, what I love to do is really pay attention to these things. And so by memorizing where this place is, I am able to encode it in my brain. Anyway, I see Martin here, so we'll catch the rest of this video after that we have our little chat. You wanna say hello to the Magnetic Memory Method family on YouTube? Hello, this is Martin. Memory Method family, how you doing? We're about to uh, go into this new memory palace. I need help with your last name because I've memorized the uh, basics, but don't say it yet, but let me try it. And I don't think I've got the pronunciation, but is it like Roesis or Ru? Oh, well, if you're gonna go with the Lapian, then it's something like that. There's a, the first S is actually an H-Y sound. Right. Which is, but I just say Roesis. Rusis. It sounds more uh, Greek that way, I suppose. Okay, Rusis. 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 Great. Well, I wasn't so far off, but this is an interesting memory thing we'll talk about some other time, is that if you don't hear something pronounced, you kind of just build the groundwork anywhere. Anyway, now we can refine it. Anyway, let's go. I'm just going to share it with you. 35 is the number of stalled espresso cafe here in Albion in Brisbane and it's at the corner of Fox Street, more or less the corner of Fox Street. And so what I had did, done was first of all I caught myself not using the memory techniques and then I thought no I'm going to memorize this and not relegate it to maps and Google or any other technology and I'm going to memorize it because it's going to set the stage for making this a much more profound and interesting memory palace that goes deeper into the chemistry and then again I'm being a bit theoretical about that in terms of norepinephrine, norepinephrine better pronounced. I some I started to call it neuropronephrine because of neurons and stuff, but it's norepinephrine. More science to be done in that. In any case, it's just a much more profound memory palace I find when I actually know the address. And then it makes it so much nicer to be able to say, yeah, it's stalled Espresso Cafe on 35 Collingwood at the corner of Fox Street in the future, in Albion. It's just a wonderful thing to do. It's great brain exercise and it's a great opportunity to use the techniques in an everyday manner. And so, Basically 35, because I have a 00 to 99, every two digit number already has an image. This is a mailman, and the mailman is the guy from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and that makes it very, very specific. And then Collingwood, so I just started to think of him like saying, hey, is there any wood here? Calling the wood. It could be a little bit more dramatic than that. It works quite nicely. And from there, Fox Street, I just see like a fox involved in the picture. Anyway, getting back to our conversation, but I'll sum up a little bit later. All right, so that was a wonderful meeting with Martin, and it was really interesting to just memorize some of the things that he was saying. There's a place I want to visit, the book Merchant Jenkins, I, I believe uh, was the name, and then there was uh, another bookstore apparently called Logical Uncertainty, or Logical Unsanity, that's what it was, I think. And uh, 
then he mentioned something too about the Beach of the War Gods, which was a Chinese movie that uh, 1975, he guessed, he wasn't sure. In any case, it was a really great little place and so I'm starting to create the memory palace in my mind and just to make sure that I memorize the address for a long time to come, forever, ideally, I'm going to also create some images or I'm going to repeat the images that were there. So it was Collingwood, 35 Collingwood at the corner of Fox and the images that I created, I remember, you know, Fox, I was thinking of Fantastic Mr. Fox, I was not sure if George Clooney was the voice of that guy or not, but I'd just throw him in there anyway, because that's what I remember it being. And then Collingwood, of course, was my figure for 35, uh, calling some wood, and also shout out to Forest Strategy, who is also, it's always interesting to like talk out loud while you're recalling stuff from memory, but I remember Hiver and uh, oh, it was uh, Brund, Brundhiver. Pretty sure that's that's how it was. And I remember because of the German Brun and then uh, uh, the beehives in a river. So Brundhiver, who is also for strategy, shout out for you on the uh, for being on the YouTube live where I was talking about becoming a GPS. But as I'm walking around here and I'm observing these different streets, I can take a moment to memorize the actual streets or maybe go look at Google Maps later and memorize the streets that way. But just starting to get a sense of the general area. And it's like this industrial area, really interesting. And really have now a new piece of real estate in mind, a great experience, a lot of details and some things that we were talking about, Martin and I, that are now so rich and deep in the memory palace, the growing, endless collection of memory palaces that will get bigger and bigger and bigger by collecting and gathering new memory palaces all the time. So here's the thing. If you don't know how to create a well-formed memory palace and you'd like to be able, well, look at this. Sweet. I like that ride. Very nice. Uh, if you want to create a memory palace, a well-formed memory palace and so forth, even out of cars, because you can make memory palaces um, that are based on cars, then you want to take my free course, which is available to you 24-7 at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash YT. And the benefits is you'll be able to learn any language much, much quicker, memorize the names of streets and turn your brain into a human GPS system and memorize the actual numbers of the places, memorize that it's the actual names of the places that you're at and the people that you meet there, different authors, titles of books that come up and so forth. Anything you want to memorize, you can store in a memory palace and then hold in your mind for as long as you wish to hold it. And it just requires a little bit of a process that I call recall rehearsal. And it's called different things, but it more or less is best thought of as recall rehearsal because of the theater nature of the memory palace and you're call, calling everybody up for a dress rehearsal in your mind, the magnetic imagery that you create. So that's at magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash YT. And I hope you enjoyed this video with a little bit of, you know, day in the life of a nemonist using memory palaces and doing it in such a way as to create more memory palaces by tapping into that perfect, beautiful, wonderful thing called memory that is in everybody's mind and never think that this is beyond you because your brain is made out of the same stuff as the best memory champions and more or less functions in exactly the same way based on the same chemicals. So make sure that if you're not subscribed to this channel, get subscribed, hit the thumbs up and come visit me at magneticmarymethod.com forward slash YT to claim your free course in creating well-formed memory palaces that will stand the test of time and serve you for the rest of your life so you have the best possible memory you can have. Thanks again, and until we speak again, keep yourself magnetic.